shadows. Glorious combat is upon us. <laughs> what the f fuck? Good clip to finish on. <clears throat> Good clip to finish on. What's happening, dudes? Time to get into the coaching. Apologies for the wait, guys. Uh, <clears throat> let's go. Just had to have some lunch. I ran out of peanut butter. I had to have Vegemite. Which is not the worst thing in the world. But I had Vegemite for breakfast as well. I used the last of my peanut butter on a single slice of peanut butter. Toast. GG's. <clears throat> hey, hey! Hey, how's it going? Good, man. Thanks for your patience. How you doing? Pretty good. Cool. How's ladder been treating you? Uh, it's been a little bit up and down. Um, I'll make my way down to silver, like midway on silver one, and then work my way back up to gold two, and almost get to gold one, and then all the way back down. I think I've bounced up and down probably three times now. What sort of MMR range is that, though? So what are we talking here? So like I'm not like... actually sure. <clears throat> Let's take a look here. So I mean, just looking through your match history, it's it's mostly a relatively even mix of wins and losses. There's definitely some days where it's a lot more losses, a few more of those somewhere. It's a, a lot more wins as well. Um, Absolutely. And that happens, natural up, upswing and downswing. Let's stay focused on the details rather than the rank. So. I do remember you, uh, you know, you sent out um, an email kind of outlining it, um, and I'm trying to remember exactly what we've got. So I'm reading through the notes. I think you've, you've put everything from the email pretty much here in the document, right? Absolutely. Good man. Um, <clears throat> okay, cool. PV, oh yes, PVP, okay, yeah, now I remember, because, because yeah, I read that email a little while ago, okay, yeah, yeah, so PVP was like the huge problem for you right now, now I remember, um, so that's just not been working out for you, right, you've just kind of, no doubt lost confidence in the matchup as well, after just kind of things not working and not really understanding what's going right and wrong, um, it's Absolutely. just, the, the main thing is PVP today that we've got to get on top of, and then we can try and answer a few of these other questions as well, um, <laughs> okay, um, okay, cool. So there's two specific all-ins we can talk about later. Try and remind me to do that as we're getting closer to the end of the hour. Uh, okay. just, just in case, you know, we kind of get too, too honed in on the one thing, we forget to do it. Um, <laughs> okay, PvP. All right, let me make you the leader. Show us a replay. Um, currently against sure. Protoss... <clears throat> you are doing this opening here. Classic stalk. Okay, stalker sentry expand. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's a pretty PVP is interesting because <clears throat> yeah, this is, this can be a finicky matchup in some scenarios. Um, I think. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So make me the leader. We'll, we'll open this up. Um, I'm thinking yeah, of how we can. Most modify this to make you make it make it a little bit more appropriate for your level and the thing is like based on the meta it's not just because you're you know you're gold or you're silver um same thing for myself i moved away from this build because i was just getting punished by by certain builds that were you know i i had to play i could block with this build but i had to play very well to do it so i'm gonna make a few changes here um so starting out let's let's take a look <clears throat> okay Coaching, 30th August. Okay, so PvP build, classics, stalker, sentry, expand. Now this is nice, it gives us that hallucination scout, which is fantastic, that's great. Um, are you scouting for a cannon rush? Is that what we're looking for? Yeah, on? I've had a lot of like all-ins and cannon rushes, so I am very paranoid. Okay, okay. <clears throat> um... All right, so that's 
definitely going to cost us stuff, so we want to, we want to scrap that. But f first of all, sorry, before I look at the game, don't don't get distracted, pig. You already had some ideas just looking at the build. We're going to scrap the forge. Um, okay. So okay. <clears throat> we're going to try and um, I imagine I mean imagine we'll be charged with Archon Immortal focused in this matchup. You're you're cool to go with that composition in the mid game, yeah? Yeah, that's generally what I've been shooting for. Okay, so scrapping the forge is going to be really nice. We might need some safety shield battery timing where we just always build a shield battery in the main and natural mineral lines at specific timings to help us against oracles and things like that. So we just have like a default time and we do that every game. Um, cool. Do you, do people shade adepts in and, and just wreck you with that often or is this pretty rare? It's pretty rare, but um, since our last coaching session, you suggested it and I've been picking it up. It also works really well when um, you have a, a probe coming in to pylon rush. You can just block them as well. To, sorry. I'm to not... cannon rush, sorry. Block them. Oh, with your wall off, you mean? Yeah. Ah, okay, cool, cool. Sorry, I thought you meant with the adepts. I was like... I'm confused. What sort of cannon rush is this that's hitting you at three minutes into the game? Um, cool. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that, that is what a lot of people are going for. Um, it can cause problems doing that. I, I, like in that, you know, they can kill your gateways from the low ground sometimes if you can't deny high ground vision. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. There's there's always calculations. Cannon rushing is its own complex scenario, right? But definitely it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good uh, way to defend in some scenarios. So, <clears throat> so we're going to be doing a stalker sentry. Um, we're going for an expand. Now, one thing here is you can see you've left your rally point on your natural. So, and you've just misplaced your nexus as well. Oh no, there's a, there's a little rectangle. Actually, a lot of the maps have these little helpers that make it even easier to figure out exactly where kind of the center of your mouse should be when you're placing your nexus down. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I always do whenever I'm placing an expansion is I always start it, or most of the time I start it, Di like like diagonally down to the bottom left of where you put that nexus. Basically, in range of the minerals where I know I can't place it, so I can find the edge, and then I so I just kind of move it to the top right until it turns green. Because you know if you try to build your nexus too close to the minerals, it's blocked, and a few hexes of it will be red. Oh, did not know that. Yeah. So because you can't build too close to minerals or gas, right? So it's the same thing as when you're trying to build your gateways in a nice tight grid. Um, you're trying to go like, okay, let's you know put down eight gateways. You don't want to just have them haphazardly spread across your base, right? You want to build them in a nice tight grid all right up against each other. And you want to so, kind of find the edge of the previous gateway you've put down, click it right there, edge of that one, click it right there kind of thing. So with the Nexus, you want to really make sure, yeah, you kind of like, okay, let's try and place the Nexus like down to the left like here and then just move my mouse up until i can actually place it and that's going to allow you to make sure you get that other thing so fear of the cannon rush <clears throat> um what we're going to do is we're going to give ourselves a nice ambitious thing because you're scouting pretty early i think you you go is it gateway scout i think you do a gateway scout yeah once i drop that first gateway is when i start scouting cool that's a good time to do it and that probe will see a cannon rush coming okay so what we're going to do is very simple. Rather than having this probe on patrol like that, what you're gonna do is we're gonna train ourselves to watch the minimap battle. And if you lose some games, that's fine. It's gonna give us more emphasis on that. So, <clears throat> uh, replay. Scrap the patrolling probe. Watch your scouting probe. Uh, and if you see an enemy probe at all, Send one probe to harass it. It's just a nice way to do it. Just send one probe to attack it. Okay? Gotcha. Just makes it nice and safe. And this way, it's only if they probe scout that you're going to waste this mining time. Whereas in this game, your opponent played completely blind. <clears throat> right? And yet we've wasted so much mining time on that probe down there. And that probe literally never goes back to work. It's just still chilling and we've forgotten about it. And there's so much mining time lost because wait, we've probe scouted as well. So essentially it's two probes from very early on which aren't doing anything in our games. And even now when we're going to take our Nexus, we still haven't put that back to work. Do you think this was you forgetting about it? Or do you think it was a conscious decision where you were still a bit worried about the cannons at this point in the game? 
I am still worried about the cans of that game. Um, I usually take that probe off once it's time to build the second Nexus. Um, so if they're doing a cannon rush that late, that's almost never going to happen. So you want to watch your replays and, and focus more on the game timer. There will be weird, crazy rushes that happen. But even then, you don't, you don't need to see it. I mean, if they cannon rush your expansion, that's not the end of the world, right? You're, you're just going to be like, oh okay <laughs> cancel you know you've got tech up at that point you can do whatever the fuck you want it's not a big deal not only that we've seen our opponents expanded we've also seen our opponents go on gate and doesn't have a forge or anything like that down now obviously if we go to everyone's camera yes they have a forge now we never spotted that okay so our opponent has gone for an expansion so we shouldn't be worried about anything coming out of our opponent at all right there's zero threat because our opponent is rushing expansion before even getting a cybernetic score. This is a gate nexus expand from our opponent. So that's something which we should always be... Uh, <clears throat> be. I mean, we're going to get rid of that patrolling probe anyway. But we shouldn't be paranoid about these things. Whenever we get traumatized by certain rushes, certain aggression, it's easy to get very emotional with our kind of overreacting in every game. We're kind of blindly preparing for it, even if there's a 0% chance of it coming. And that's something you really want to fight against. You want to fight against that fear. Otherwise, you do end up being very, very sloppy. We just end up giving up too many advantages, which is not necessary. Um, notice we've only got 15 probes in the main base this game. <clears throat> so definitely should have had 16 there. Um, Robo could have come down um, quite a little bit faster. We have no idea what tech our opponent's going for, so we should be going... Where's that hallucination? Your sentry was late, by the way. So that hallucination, sh you should have had 100 energy at 3 minutes 40. So yeah. little things. What's going on? Why did we not start that unit? Let's go find out. <clears throat> Okay, let's also look at something else, by the way. So, uh, second pylon should be closer to your mineral line because you need to be able to put a shield battery right in the middle of your mineral line to protect against oracles. So, something to remember for this matchup, that second pylon, if you can build that closer, that'd be good. You can put a shield battery kind of in an okay spot. It'll block your gas a bit, but it'll reach most of the mineral line, but it's not as helpful as if it's in the middle. So, that's key. Also, your third pylon, if that's on the low ground, that's really nice because it allows us to build shield batteries down there as well. These are all nice. little tweaks. They can make a difference. The key thing here, though, is that we <clears throat> just didn't start our sentry straight away. The sentry is the most important thing. you got to start that sentry immediately. And you can see you were a little bit gas starved. So looking at this from quite early on, let's go, let's go wait. Okay. Let's look at your gas mining. So what do you normally do with your gas mining? When do you put on gas? Do you rally onto it or do you manually put them on? I've been rallying to them now. Thank you, Doke. <clears throat> so with this build, we do need a little bit more gas, just always. So something we should try to remember is, yeah, maybe we can rally onto it, but we should probably put like one or two workers on each gas straight away, just to make it right. And then maybe we don't have to play with the rally point. However you want to do it, maybe play with the rally point once your minerals are saturated, but we do need that gas a little bit earlier. Also, we need a bit of urgency on this cyber core. Look at the delay here from that gateway going down to that cyber core starting. Mirror matchups more than any other matchup will teach you to be incredibly precise with everything you do. Every second is valuable. Gateway finishes at a minute 29. Four seconds until the cyber core went down. That should be zero seconds or one second. It seems small, but that adds up. Let's go back and check your gateway debt went down as early as it could have as well. <clears throat> There's a good chance because we've given up a bit of mining time, it's going to be slightly slow here. Let's see. Gateway was reasonably fast. I think that was fine, that gateway timing. So I think that was okay. But definitely the cyber core there was about four seconds late. And these are just the little things you just want to check in your build. You know, open up your replay and, and just look at these tiny details and how you can improve them. And these are the things that should give you big benefits in the long term. So okay. <clears throat> cyber core finishes and we don't have enough gas. So yeah, just as a general rule, let's just make sure we, we put, I don't know, two guys on each gas straight away when they finish and then even it out from there. That'll help us out. So um, I had a question on this as yep. well because the, the reason why my cyber core has been coming down, also my second nexus gets delayed, is because I'm scouting and I actually look at the other side. Um, I actually look at the probe before and that I've run into that issue so many times. I'm trying to, to stop the habit. So I'll, once the probe hits there, um, their mineral line i start looking to what they're doing 
Yeah, well, that's a pretty nasty habit, isn't it? And I can partly see why you've done it. You're going to get trained to do it because you're clicking into the mineral line as well, which is very dangerous, right? If he just attacks it, he could kill your probe. So that's going to train you automatically on a subconscious level to look at your probe at this point because otherwise it could yeah. die. If you look at me when I'm playing, I will do a triangle of waypoints below the nexus, behind the mineral line, and then the other, the other corner. So my probe will never walk through that mineral line. Or if it does, it'll pass between like the gas and the edge minerals where it can't get surrounded. So I will just have it do a circuit and I won't even look at it. And then all you should be doing is glancing at it at one moment, right? So here you put down your second gateway. You do put down your core. This game, you're actually okay with it. But then you look at your probe and we should be immediately just kind of taking a snapshot of the important information. So at this point, you've seen a nexus. You've just seen the first gas go down. How do you classify this build? What are you thinking? Um, so as soon as I see it, um, I don't, let me see. I see the gate. Um, I don't see their core. So I'm thinking maybe they're going for an early rush, which is another thing I've been paranoid about. Okay. Um, so, so what sort of early rush? Kind of like a, I would say more of the an all in a one base all in rather than an be, early be, rush. Be, be specific. So what sort of one base all in? Because you said because there's no cyber core and there's a one base all in. So what what sort of one base all in could come off if they if they don't have a cybernetics core? It's not like rush. Okay, but they'd have to walk all the way across the map, right? Absolutely. And you've also seen he's got a nexus as well. So it can't be a one base all in or a rush of any yeah. kind, right? So, and, and you have spotted the Nexus at this point. So even if you hadn't spotted the Nexus, we would be able to look at this. We'd be able to say, you know, <clears throat> this is just a very straightforward build. So right now you're stuck in the mindset of looking at this from your point of view. Go off everyone's camera, go, go off your camera, go to everyone's camera. Let's look at his build order. Now you in PVZ, we've started doing a normal expand build into the DT drop, right? The Archon yes. drop. <clears throat> so what's the order of structures with that build off the top of your head? So we go Pylon, Gateway, then Nexus, and then Cybercore. And then we go Pylon. Um, it's, like, it's, you know, it's, sec it's second gas, and then, then second Pylon. Yeah, sec yeah second yeah. gas. So I completely forgot the gas in that one. Yeah. But if we look at what our opponent's doing here, this is essentially the same build. He's just skipped the gas, right? Yep. But that's just a slight reordering, especially if he takes both gases pretty quickly now. She does. It's the exact same build, essentially. It's just that, yeah, the cyber core is a little bit delayed, but it's essentially the same thing, right? It's pretty much the same set of, of things in that Tech is delayed. Your opponent squeezed a random zealot in, which is not a threat. That's gonna by, by the time a zealot could walk across the map, you're gonna have your normal units out, stalker. Anything like that beats a zealot easy, right? Yeah. So if they don't have gas and their gateway is at home, th there's no way a rush can come out of that. So right. <clears throat> so what what's happening there is we're kind of looking at the base, we're taking a snapshot. And we're kind of freaking out based on our emotional trauma of what's happened in the past games. And this is the most common thing which we even see in tournaments, right? We were doing a PVZ analysis earlier today and I was talking about why this, this Zerg build's pretty shitty and someone had a really good point that even though a lot of pros, you know, a lot of pros are doing it and, and maybe it's better if your opponent's a bit on edge in a tournament setting because they freak out, right? And that's kind of the same thing. Even at pro level, people react emotionally rather than physically. But the only gasless attacks a Protoss can do to you is a cannon rush. Or a proxy gate zealot. Yes, technically, he could build zealots off three gateways in his base and walk them across the map. Discount it. It's terrible. All you'd need to do is build a pylon in your wall, and you're walled off, and those zealots can't do anything, and you've got stalkers behind it. Like, you, you literally would not need to respond to that at all. So the only rush is a cannon rush or a zealot rush, right? So anytime you see no gas, that's actually a sign of your opponent expanding and playing like that. There's, there's two options. It's one or the other, right? And, and that's the yeah. sort of tree you should have in your brain it's like oh he doesn't have gas what's he doing and you've actually already seen the expansion which just answers the question oh he's expanding 
So he's going economical. And there is literally zero aggression that comes off this. So if we wanted to go to the ultimate level of flexibility, you could do something like, well, I know exactly what my opponent's doing. I could just go take a Nexus right now and not even build the gateway units, right? Because yeah. my opponent can't attack me, so I, I don't need to build them. Now, I would advise you just stick to your normal build. We don't need to be that flexible. But we definitely should not be worried, right? We simply, by looking at the base, should be like, oh, he's going for an expansion. No gases are down yet, or he's taking really late gas. Cool. Just an expand build. Don't need to worry about anything, right? And that's all we need to worry about. Our probe sitting behind is natural. Normally a good habit if our opponent's on one base. Pointless in this scenario, right? Because we've already seen the Nexus. That probe could have just gone to hide at the third or go home, one or the other. No need to leave that probe there. The purpose of leaving a probe at their natural is to see whether or not they expand. So let's make sure we try and focus on that. So <clears throat> realistically here, what's the big thing? Number one, we're gonna scrap this silly patrolling probe. And we're gonna, if we see a probe coming across the map, which will cross paths with our scouting probe, We'll just send another probe out and we'll just attack move it on their probe. Easy peasy. Otherwise, no response to cannon rushes whatsoever. We just we just play confident. And that's the scariest and hardest and best thing you can do as a StarCraft player. And especially when you're having these big ups and downs in MMR, usually, not with everyone, but usually the big thing that happens is a lack of confidence, right? You lose a game, you get a little bit thrown out of your element. You start thinking, fuck me, that was a scary Zergling rush. Holy shit, that proxy barracks marine rush came out of nowhere. And you're kind of lingering on that and you've already queued the next game and you're five minutes in and you fucked up your opening a little bit and and then you lose another game and your confidence takes another hit and then the next game queues up and we start scouting for a proxy barracks and we're actually playing a zerg player but we're just so thrown off we're not paying attention to the game itself we're lingering on the past games so one thing you can do to help combat this and, and like i said obviously i'm projecting here i don't know if this is your case um but one of the big things is make sure at the end of a game, you clear your head for a minute. I, I like to really contemplate on a loss right afterwards. Great habits are opening up the, the, the graphs and looking at the workers tab and saying, how many workers did he hit me off? And sometimes you'll, you'll be like, oh, that was weird. I just died to this attack. And you really don't understand what happened in the game. And you'll look at the graphs and you'll say, oh, I was at 60 workers. He was at 30. Fuck me. <laughs> that was a crazy. I was so far ahead on economy. I didn't even realize it in the game. Oh, my gosh. And then that gives you, you the kind of impetus to go back and look at it. But not just that, you can also just spend a minute looking at the replay and saying, what just happened? What just happened? Anytime you're not 100% sure what just happened, go through and try to just check what their build is. You go, what is my opponent's goal? You know, and really look at their build order and say, okay, oh, he's trying to do this sort of rush. Okay. And if it's really something that worries you or you think you might encounter again, or you'd like to really get a good handle on, figure out a simple scouting tell of that. Say, did my normal scout scout something? different with this compared to a normal build which i could have seen and you can go through that but the most important thing even without getting any specifics is just to know what happened to you and go ah that happened and if you can just find one scouting tell or one way you could do your build better which might have changed the outcome maybe it was just you forgot to scout if your opponent had a third base or not so you just went and took three bases probed them up and died to a two base attack you just forgot to scout but if you can get that clear in your head at the end of the game you can very easily draw a quick conclusion and confidently going to the next series saying, my game plan was good. I did X and Y really good. I did my opening well. I scouted at the start. I saw he expanded. I macroed up. I added Colossi attack. And then he killed me because I forgot to do a follow-up scout. So there was a lot of things right there. So you can actually get the confidence even in your losses if you kind of have this understanding of what you've just suffered after a loss, right? Absolutely. And you identify the one thing to fix right and and that gives you so much confidence in everything else you're doing right because you can play a brilliant game of starcraft and still lose um because everything is brilliant except for one very key thing or a couple of very key things right so um i think it's important for you to just try and make sure you get that perspective on, on what's going wrong in your games and let's not start changing our build unless we have a very good reason to do it so rather than okay i've been cannon rushed Let's always leave a patrolling probe here for a four minute window. Let's say, well, realistically, most of the cannon rushes that hit you have hit you at the two minute mark, right? They start building piles and cannons at like a minute 30 and that does the damage. So we're gonna keep an eye out for that just between a minute 30 and two minutes. And if they don't come in and start building pylons at that point, we'll just go back and, you know, we'll, we'll just send that probe back to mining or whatever. 
Whereas you you kind of said like, okay, I've been cannon rushed a few times. It's fucking pissed me off. I'm gonna have a patrol sitting in front of my natural for about five minutes. It was it was about four minutes thirty, five minutes, something like that in this game before we put that probe back to mining. Yeah, yeah four minutes thirty. It was still going. Um, <clears throat> and then we can also just hunt for little things as well, right? We can go. Oh, why did I hide that probe behind his natural? I didn't need to do that. I already saw he expanded. Cool, cool. Um, you didn't have enough money for the sentry and the stalker. You could look at that and go, oh, okay, that was a bit of a shame. So, you know, okay, let's make sure we put two guys on each gas when those gases finish from now on. That's going to fit, fit with this build a little bit better because that sentry, the stalker, and the warp gate, very expensive gas-heavy upgrades. Awesome. So this is going to make a big difference. Now, from here, once you get in your element, you're actually probing quite well. You're building an upgrade. You're going for the robo, which is fantastic. You've got an observer going across the map, building immortals, building a twilight. You know, this is a pretty good build-up. Your opponent... I would say just looking at the supply and stuff is, is a little bit, you know, less uh, covering their bases than you, right? Uh, number one, yeah. zero detection. He'd just die if you made a single DT. He can't make detection except cannons. He'd be dead. Okay, cool. Uh, Oracle. He's got one stalker. That's all he has that shoots. Okay, that's, that's kind of shit. Let's be real, though. You don't have any defense against that either. And this is your first hallucination scout, I believe, at this point. So, yeah. um, shield battery timing. Um, or or in general, let, let's go back actually to the early stage. Let's take a look. So normally about four minutes is probably when an oracle would hit you. And the early stages, let's say from four minutes, we want to make sure we have at least two stalkers sitting in our main mineral line um, in case an oracle comes in. That's that's a nice way to do it. So you can just leave your army standing in your main base in the early game, and that's okay. If he attacks your natural, you can pull them down there. Okay. Um, yeah. We can also say, you know what? We're scrapping that forge. Four minutes seems like a good time, or let's say three minutes 30, let's put down a shield battery in our main base. And I think that'll help keep us a lot safer. Gotcha. All right. Um, why is this so big? There we go. And speaking to what you were talking about earlier about um, getting traumatized and having reactions, I felt like that's crept into all three of my matchups. Mm. Um, and I think that's kind of attributed to me going... I've experienced a lot of um, one base all ins, you know, cyclone rushes, and well, not so much rushes, but like mass cyclones and um, different sort of one base all ins. And so I've kind of responded by building a heavy army very quickly. Mm. And then we kind of we, we start building things without them being reactions, right? So absolutely, we we want to look, we want to we want to work on your analysis of these all ins or these surprise harassments that get you. And we want to say, well, could I have spotted this? Number one, and number two, what is the most minimalistic reaction to this um, that I can be, or the most minimalistic change by default in my build that can fix this, right? And and most of the time. Um, I would say if you haven't you haven't developed that right that routine i died to an all-in open the replay let's fucking understand this build first of all and then once we understand what their goal is oh what the fuck he doesn't even have any expansion okay this is a complete one base all in i went 35 probes on two base no wonder i died to this cyclone proxy right and, and this sort of thing happens all the time and that that, that that's obviously a more obvious case there are going to be more fringe cases where you're a bit more confused and you need to really pour over the replay this forces you to really understand your opponent's side of the things right it's it's the equivalent of you're playing chess you've lost a game you're looking through a match what do you do you turn the chess board around and you imagine it from their point of view and you say okay well what are they trying to achieve at this point point? and once you understand that that's, that's, that's a big part of what strategy is, right? Because you can suddenly do something which in of itself seems like a terrible decision. You're like, well, I'm not just going to build three shield batteries at the front of my natural every game. That's what we end up doing when we get traumatized. We're like, well, I've just got to build three shield batteries at four minutes in every game versus Terran. And it's like, but he's gone Absolutely. third command center, right? But once you identify the tell, we say in this is a situation, yeah, he's massing Cyclones one base. Fuck yeah, we want three shield batteries. Like there's no such thing as an over response in this scenario. I'm not even going to build any probes. I built my Nexus. I'm not even putting any probes on it. We're just making fighting shit because if we know if we stop this attack, there's no follow up, right? Um, right. So being able to kind of gauge and, and put in perspective our opponent's builds will really help us out. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So um, scrap the forge. We're going to say three minute 30 shield battery in the main. Um, I don't think we need one in the natural by default just yet. We're going to have that sentry scout way earlier, and, and that should be fine. 
Let's look at your build up from here. Now, I noticed you built quite a few stalkers. So especially because you're not going for blink, and I totally am down with you not going blink. I like it. I don't, <laughs> don't like you going blink um, unless you've actually got the APM and the micro to use it. So, I do not. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I often skip blink as well. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't got the fucking APM for that. I'm just going to lose my stalkers. Screw it. Um, we didn't need to keep making stalkers there. If there was fighting going on, sure. But otherwise, try to stop at just four or six stalkers because all of his units are way better value in a frontal fight. He's just gone plus two mass arc on charge lot. Um, Immortals also aren't going to be too helpful in this scenario because look at his army. None of those units are armored. So Immortals are not a bad unit to have a few mixed in of. But basically what happens in medium fights is charge lots and archons are everything. They are the money. They are the most important part of it. Okay. Um, gotcha. So just having a good arc, especially the archons. The archons are like the most important part. They are so, so important. Um, because as zealots charge, the bigger the numbers of zealots get, the more archons you have, the more their splash damage just stacks up on these zealots that automatically will clump up, right? Um, obviously, if you yeah. flank with zealots, they're way more effective. Same with any close range units. If they can come in from multiple sides, they become more effective. But basically, in this scenario, if I were you, I would just be making zealots and archons right now and being like, okay, let's be really defensive because that's a fucking scary zealot archon force my opponent's got. Now, you're both probing up a third base here, right? Yeah. You can see he's probed his third a little. He actually hasn't probed it very much. If we look at his base, we see his natural just doesn't have workers on it. He's decided to long distance mine because he doesn't have a good grasp of economy management. Um, there was no reason for him to long distance mine with those workers. They could be fully mining on the natural. And now he's starting to probe while going for a big zealot arc on attack. Now, we've taken a while to explode in gateways, but we are getting there. We've added a second forge, which can be nice. But we've just warped in more stalkers there. Remember that Stalkers are a trash unit. Because you started out doing a lot of Colossi Stalker Sentry play and Colossi Stalker, the Stalkers were a lot better with that army, right? They, they complemented yes. it. With this army, Stalkers are only a good early game unit. They're good for anti-air. They're really bad in pitch battles. Pure Zealot, pure Archon. That's the real mid-game focus. I don't mind that you kept building Immortals here. That's totally fine. You had three Immortals. That's, that's actually a nice number. They tank a lot of damage. They dish out some damage. Immortals are always a good unit to have some of. We just don't want to focus on it, right? Um, we've got equal army supply. Yes, we're down an upgrade, soon to be two upgrades, which is a shame. We're up quite a bit in economy, but these stalkers just aren't going to add anything for us here. So that's going to be a real shame in this game because he's just going to have the, the harder hitting army right now and uh, is going to run in. And actually not a terrible angle for us. Our army really needs to kind of, yeah, okay. But, oh, we didn't pull our probes from the natural at all. So that was definitely, yeah, they all went down and... No Archons in the mix for us. When Archons should have been the focus. Yeah. Would have made and a big that's, difference. That's been exactly what my uh, my main question has been. Um, aside from the upgrades, I've seen that I have the same um, supply, army supplies as my opponents. And I just get trashed. Yeah. I mean, definitely Archons are, are the more important unit here, so... Archons and Immortals generally are very important. Zealots can be very, very powerful as well. But as the armies get bigger and bigger, the Zealots lose power, right? So you've got like one Archon, two Immortals. 20 Zealots versus 10 Zealots, massive difference, right? The 20 Zealots guy is going to wreck it if you've both got just like one Archon and a couple Immortals each. you got seven, eight Archons. Doesn't really matter if your opponent has 10 more Zealots than you. If you've got two more Archons, it, it kind of cancels out. It's totally fine, especially if you don't let him flank you. If you're fighting in like a choked up area, Archons can be way better, right? So, Absolutely. so yeah, um, so that's definitely important there for you to focus on. That'll, that'll make a difference. Um, so yeah, you're just in the habit of warping in Stalkers. Stalkers aren't that good a unit. Simple change. It's going to make your play a thousand times better. Same with Adepts. Adepts are like not a great unit in the later stages. They're both kind of good in small numbers early on because they're flexible range units. But Zealots just are cheaper, do a lot more damage. Um, just generally are really good with charge as well. So, gotcha. not just that, we were camping all game. Um, and we probed up our third base. Yeah, yeah. We are always going to go to two base saturation. Only. You can take a third, but don't probe it. So this is your rule. Okay. You can transfer workers from main as it mines out. Okay. 
Do you see how your, your main's at 14 out of 10? So at about eight minutes 30, you can normally pull about eight probes out of your main base, send them over to your third, okay? Gotcha. So you're always gonna be hitting this timing attack here. <clears throat> so normally it's about, you're aiming for an attack that might look something like, what do we got? Three immortals, prism, four plus archons, 10 plus zealots. And maybe some leftover sentry stalker, but they're like pretty useless, right? The guardian shield is yeah. nice, but they don't really contribute anything other than a guardian shield. That's it. Um, sentry stalker. But they're, they're not important. They're not important at all at that stage, okay? So three immortals, prism, uh, four or more archons, ton of zealots, and we could, we could probably say, you know, plus one attack or something like that, right? Because your forge is going to be later. Or no upgrades even. That's totally fine. If we just don't get a forge, we just hit this attack. That's going to work out really well because we're actually getting over there. Now, as you get better at this, in the long run, we'd want you to be doing a little bit of pressure as well, right? So this is very totally, very, very totally. How can we work some pressure into this build without overcomplicating things? We don't want to make it like, oh, I'm fucking dancing a prism in and out of mineral lines, dropping adepts. What I is a really our... simple way you could pressure off the top of your head? With our early stalkers, I guess, um, we can go and just harass their mineral line. What if an oracle runs into our base, though? If our stalkers are across the map, we'll end up That's in trouble. That's very so true. It's not a bad, bad thought there. It doesn't need to be super early. The period I'm thinking is about the five-minute mark, okay? <clears throat> so if we look at the five-minute mark in this game, and it's, it's going to be a bit different in each game. Sometimes you both stay, you know, your opponent will stay on one base a bit longer, that sort of thing. But at this point, you've got Warp Gate. <clears throat> um, it's really nice as well if you always set up like a... If that probe didn't hide behind the natural, it can always, at some point when you need an extra pylon, put a pylon like over here. You see where I've signaled? Oh, yeah. Just like up there or down here. Warp in two adepts. Shade them into the natural mineral line. So you shade it from about here. That way the shade will finish in the back end of the natural mineral line. And you just shift click on the probes. And then you go back and macro. Okay. I guarantee you, if you did that at this point in this game, even if he reacted instantly, which he would not, the Stalker, an Adept, and a Zealot, probably lose about eight or nine probes. It's like ridiculous damage. Not just that. This is going to allow you to scout. If your Observer gets sniped or you forgot to build your Observer or anything else, having this pressure worked in, it always just gives you a little bit more of a feel of what your opponent's doing, right? It forces you to look at and interact with your opponent. So what we're going to do is about five minutes... Something like that. Whatever you want the trigger to be, you can you can make the trigger more precise. You're like, after I put my Twilight Council down, I build two adepts. Or if I don't have a pilot on the map, I just send them across, right? So two adepts shade into their natural. And when you look at really high level PvP, you'll see players doing this instantly, right? So one of the big weaknesses of your build um, <laughs> is that um, at pro level and at high level, one of the reasons I got frustrated is prisms are so powerful, especially if you skip blink, which you do with the fast forge. Oh, yeah. sorry, we've got someone who apparently didn't get enough hugs from their mum. They want some attention on the stream and we're going to block communication. Good job. That's all right. Mothers, fathers out there, don't get sucked into any of this tough love stuff. Give your kids a lot of hugs so that they don't try and get attention on my stream, please. Um, Hamel, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Oily Seal, thanks for the 13 month sub. Appreciate the support, guys. <laughs> Krabby Joe's a little bit crabby. Um, cool, so those two adepts will be really nice. That, that will make a really good difference. Um, yeah, okay, cool. We're gonna hit like that big timing attack. It's going to be real, like, just four or five stalkers in the early game and then make zealots, okay? Sometimes only, even if you only make two or three stalkers and then just go zealots, I'm totally fine with that. Because unless your opponent's got really advanced micro, even unupgraded zealots are actually just one of the best punch-for-punch -punch units in the game. Um, if you don't believe me, go and watch Rotterdam stream. Um, the number of silly Phoenix slow zealot immortal all-ins that he does uh, is just insane. Um... <laughs> Yeah, slow zealots are just great. They're, they're, they're just so cheap as well, and, and they're going to kind of help you out more later in the game. So, yeah, um, you'd actually be amazed the amount of money you save as well. 50 gas for each one of these extra stalkers and 25 minerals, that adds up. Adds up a lot, as opposed to if they were zealot warpins instead. 
So that allows you to, you know, get your gateways down faster, all that sort of stuff. Um, I guess my main question would be, because uh, I've been running into, um, I guess they, they wall in, drop can cannons on the natural, and then they'll start going uh, Void Ray. And I've had a little bit of a success going uh, Mass Stalker and mm -hmm. building Void Rays myself against that. Do you think I should go a bit heavier on the, the Arca and Zealot? Do you think that'll be a good combatant towards uh, <coughs> Mass Void yeah. Rays? Yeah, absolutely. Void Rays do pretty trash damage, especially to Archons, so Archons do pretty good against them. Um, I would say you see someone turtling Sky Toss, definitely you can open Blink, um, you know, open Blink and jump on the Void Rays uh, if you can. But just just do a big two base. Do, do your normal timing. So do your okay. normal attack, um, but send the prism, or maybe even have a second prism, into the main. And warp in a, you know, 10 zealots there as you hit the front. Um, awesome. And the thing is, you don't need to commit to that. So obviously there's always flexibility. Well, oh, he's got 12 cannons at the front. Okay, maybe you go warp in zealots and DTs in his main base or something. But you just, you just probe up your third base fully. Get a double forge, get really well upgraded archons. And then you go when he moves out to take a third, which he eventually has to do, right? So, you right. know, you can you can be like, well, I'm building a giant Archon Ball. Oh my god, he's, he's going two base carrier now. He's just sitting there. <laughs> he's just sitting on two base. I guess I take a fourth. Take the gases there as well. I've got plus two shields, plus two attack Archons now. With a sentry with them, with Guardian Shield ready. And Interceptors will get wrecked. Carriers, Voiders will get wrecked by Archons um, until they get to crazy high numbers. And even then, they'll need something else if, you're, if you've got enough Archons for good enough upgrades. So... Yeah, there's always, there's always something to be said for like, well, this will usually work, but yes, if they have 10 cannons and 10 shield batteries on their natural, maybe you just harass the main or even blink into the main base. You know, that's a move. Yeah, have you ever done a blink into the main, by the way? I have not. Doesn't work on this map um, because the gap's like a bit wide. You can barely get in there, so you're, you're likely going to fuck it up. Um, but what happens is you basically just use shift. So you'd just be like, if we look at this, imagine it was blinking into your base. You basically right click your stalkers to the edge. You shift, blink, left click onto the other edge. And then you shift, right click deeper into the base. So that they'll walk up, touch the point of ground, blink across, and then move deeper into the base. So that they create room for the other That's stalkers awesome. to blink in behind them. And the thing is, some, some of them will bug out if they try to all blink at the same time because there's not enough room to get across the gap. So some of them will blink and fail and kind of stay on the same side. It's a cool maneuver that you can do in some scenarios. Um, yeah, it can be pretty cute, but uh, not necessary. I actually have a game where um, someone used DTs with blink and blinked into my base that way. <laughs> it was pretty sick. That's cool. I did that to someone one game. Oh, let's hop out of that replay. And uh, yeah, I sniped the guy's robo. It was pretty, pretty gross. It was on Dreamcatcher. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty cute. <clears throat> um, so given that we've talked a little bit about um, Protoss, would it be okay to look maybe at a, a Zerg in a Terran game? Yeah, if, especially if you have all ins. Can you please, you know, I'd love those because what we want to work on now is your your ability to look at these games and come up with solutions. And it's not about perfect solutions, it's about learning the process of coming up with solutions, which naturally, as we get more experience going through this process, our solutions will get better and better, right? But more importantly, Absolutely. we will refine our ability to choose a confident path. So, um, yeah, okay, cool. So uh, what's, do you remember what this game is? Um, I don't think I have any all-in saved because uh, I had saved our, the replays a, a bit a while before when we were original right. um but maybe next session i can like pull some specifically because i do have a lot of questions about that yeah so it's definitely um in terms of videos by the way have you watched my old dailies on defending all ins or any of my coaching sessions on defending all ins i have cool um because there's the old pig daily number 13 i think there was a terran coaching session which was really nice. Pig coaching, Terran defending all ends. Let's see. So I can find it. Maybe defending. 
Coaching. Terran. <clears throat> My man. Okay. Because a lot of that one was about looking at all the mistakes we make. Um, which I think was really good. Yeah, it was quite a while ago. I think maybe 2016, 2017. When was it? Just coming back through my videos. Uh, nope. You have left your probes undefended. <sighs> Internet laggy today. Come on. I can't believe I didn't put this up here. Maybe I had a different title. Oh well, that's cool. So, in this game, you're doing your DT drop build. Is this yep, a normal I do it opening, every time. or have you reacted to something? This is normal. I always do the DT drop um, as I was practicing it. Okay, so what timing do you normally hit with your DT drop? Um, somewhere in the six area, I would say. <clears throat> okay, so the goal, of course, is five minutes. That's where we want to hit. In this game, there is a 100% chance we weren't going to hit a six-minute timing, right? We just canceled the prism That's just at that moment. So what does that tell us? The The reason I did that is as my, um, my observer went out, I saw a huge army at my gates, and I freaked out. Even if that wasn't there... If that prism finished, it was going to finish after six minutes though, right? Absolutely. Which means you wouldn't be hitting till... When do you reckon? Probably 7, 7, and 7.30. Okay. So that's that's a big delay, right? So what Absolutely. does that tell us? If we're not hitting our benchmark, what do we think has gone wrong? Um, We've build something out of order or we're not paying attention to our build order yeah something's gone wrong with the build right definitely we're, we're not doing it quite as efficiently as we would like to and so we end up in this scenario here we have a lot of just gateway units um which aren't the best units and we're not hitting with dt's on the other side of the map as well so let's go back and let's just look at the basics completely ignore what our opponent's doing in this game let's look at your okay. build order did we get our pylon down on time? It's the very first thing, right? It was our pylon down on time and in the right position. Let's take a look. All right, pretty decently timed pylon. Not the absolute earliest, but that's all right. Getting used to that spamming clicking, fuck yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Fuck yeah, my man. Just little things like that, just practice that clicking is nice. All right, we're not building probes right now. Hmm. So, what went wrong now? I stopped probe production. Yeah, so normally you queue up an extra probe there, is what we should do, right? Yeah. Before we put that gateway down. So even though we're supply blocked, that probe should already be queued up. Okay. Yes. Replay, PVZ, Cerulean Falls. Benchmark for DT drop was 90 seconds late. What went wrong? Question mark. <clears throat> That's what we're going to be looking at. Cool. So, we need to... We forgot to queue up probes before gate went down. Um... Okay. So we're rallying two onto gas quite early. And we should have another probe queued up, right? Or do you go 19 Nexus? I, I typically try to go 20 Nexus, but I've gone 19 this time. Okay, so we should be going 20 Nexus. So we've got a probe. So already we forgot probe production for a few seconds. We've then cut a probe out of our build. Where's that cyber core? 
I am on the other side of the map looking at my probe walk around. Hmm. So, we're looking at our probe when we should be putting down our cyber core. Yep. Okay. Alright, what do we do right after our core? We queue up more probes, which you've done. And then we should be getting our next pylon, um, then our gas, our second gas, and then we second should be Second gas, then pylon. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Twilight Council. Your probe, once again, being watched, but you also sat it behind your opponent's natural. Remember, you only need to do that if they're only on one base. Gotcha. Every game. So looking at <clears throat> this, we're then building a second gateway. Are we meant to be building a Twilight Council? Yes, and that is a bad reaction on my behalf because of the uh, the mass circling rushes I've been experiencing. Okay, so trauma, we're changing our build. So we've already seen a few, a few fundamental mistakes with no changes. But remember when I asked you at the start, I said, is this your normal build or are we reacting to something? You know, is there something changing in how we're executing this? You said no, 100% uh, yeah. there is. And you need to be decisive and quick at picking up on that because this is one of these games where we could have won literally completely ignoring what our opponent was doing just following the build even here we're staring at our probe attacking a drone no what are we doing so we're letting ourselves get distracted and pulled around our twilight was meant to be down 50 seconds ago and the robo is meant to be down already by now as well you have left your <clears throat> but instead now we are letting ourselves get incredibly distracted we haven't finished saturating our main only 15 workers we haven't finished putting the three on the second gas and everything is out of order we're going up to four gateways without remembering the rover we're going up to five gateways actually five gateways so you can tell because normally you add three gateways after the dt shrine right yeah but we're, we're just completely uh butchering the build here right and this is one of these things you want to pick up on every game every replay we want to we want to be doing this so accurately Let's go back to the first thing that changed things up. Now, there were a few little mistakes and you've got to be really tight on fixing those up, right? Forgetting yes. probe production um, and then forgetting the core for a few seconds. These add up, these little things add up. But what's the big one? The big one's the gateway. It's the, it's the fucking red herring right there. This is the, yep. the moment where we can see they're like, well, I died to Zerglings one time, so I'm gonna change my entire build. Yep, as soon as that Overseer came in, I said, oh crap. So, they have Zergling speed when they rush you, right? Yes. Does our opponent have Zergling speed? He does not. In fact, he hasn't mined a single bit of gas. So, we're both looking at our probe and spending an inordinate amount of APM on it, but we're also not actually paying attention to what it's seeing at all. So, this is something we've got to work in. Let's imagine this is a standard build. What time does Ling speed finish? Off the top of your head. I do not know. All right, that's the questions you need to be asking. I die to Zerglings. Now what you've done is you've done the very common mistake, which is you've done a very disorganized response. You said, well, I need a wall. You should never look at just what is the response, it's when is the response. Timing is the most important thing in any real-time strategy game because gotcha. there is such a vast difference between Roach is hitting you at four minutes and Roach is hitting you at six minutes. And this is the, the, the thing we've got to train ourselves to always be so critical about. We need to watch for that. We need to say, wait a second. What specific timing am I being hit by these things? Three minutes 30 is the normal timing. So three minutes 30 is when Ling Speed finishes off a normal build. Okay. Gotcha. Now, look at how many buildings you have at three minutes 30. The enemy is attacking your probe. If you just built the robo in your wall as per normal, it would absolutely be started and have plenty of hit points on it by now. Hell, it would be finishing soon enough yep. by the time this Ling Speed finishes. So your normal build with the robo in the wall should be safe against a Ling Flood. Gotcha. A normal one. What about the exception? So that's off a hatch first. What if there's an exception, right? There should be a faster Ling Speed possibility, right? So what do you think yep. would be a big tell of someone potentially flooding lings a lot earlier? Would they have an expansion when we go in there with that probe? No, and they would be mining from both gases. Just one gas. Gotcha. Just one. You only need 100 gas, so you don't, don't need a lot. And they could technically hit it as early as 2 minutes 30. 
But that's a very specific scenario where your opponent has to go a much earlier spawning pool. Next time you encounter it, watch the replay. As I said earlier, look at it and understand your opponent's build. Because when you do that, it becomes very, very apparent. If this was gotcha. one of those builds, what would we see right now? That spawning pool is finished and it's wobbling because there's ling speed on it. They've gotcha. got about six less drones in their mineral line. That drone mineral line would look a lot less crowded <laughs> and there'd already be a couple of eggs with some zerglings on the way that are going to be popping soon. And gotcha. a very simple response for that. We could just immediately go, oh, don't put the Nexus down. Let's put down the Cybercore and a second gate. Or even if the Nexus is down, okay, let's put down a Cybercore and a second gate. Get a Zealot out. And then we can put the Nexus down a little bit later. And we can have that set response to that scenario. And that's where we write that reaction list for that scenario. But it should only be used in those scenarios, right? We always want to err on the side of being a greedy piece of shit, not paying attention to what's happening and dying. Because that gives us an opportunity to look for the specific tell, figure out the exact time when we should react, and then we can do that in future games. But we don't want to do that every single game or we end up handicapping ourselves, right? Um, gotcha. That's where trauma comes in. That's where, you know, us kind of doing these emotional responses rather than these like very evidence-based, critical, just getting the right response to the situation comes in. And that's super, super key. So 330, Ling Speed finishes off a normal build. What if it's one base? Uh, one base, what we call a 1312. Ling speed. Do you know what a 13 12 is? What, what's on 13? What's on 12? Can you guess? Um, I think 13 would be the spawning, spawning pool. No, 12 would be at the spawning pool. I guess 13 would be the gas. Yep. Gas and then pool. Get 100, yep. 100 gas. Sometimes they'll pull off gas there. Otherwise, they might make a bailing nest. But what, what if it's what if it's that? Basically, what are the big tells? No expansion. So, in your document I'm writing this, tells. So, oops. No expo, pool already finished when probe arrives. Okay. Response. Delay nexus, um. get wall. So, wall. With second gate and core, build two zealots. You have left your then expand and add extra, you know, sorry, wall with second gate and core, get a second pylon, build two zealots, then expand and add extra, um, add second gas, etc. And twilight robo go back into normal order of structures. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. So, Research complete. I completely ignored what my opponent did in this game, right? And this is why I always talk about, you know, practicing in isolation, no opponent, no AI, nothing to distract us. Because it's more important to look at what we're doing and to be able to critically look at, is this a good build? Is this good execution or is this bad execution? And until we get to a very high level, well, actually, even when you're at a very high level, it's always, always what you're doing in isolation, ignoring your opponent before you start thinking about, um, before you start thinking about, oh, what am I doing? Is it correct for, compared to what they're doing? We've got to refine the baseline before we refine anything else. Um, assuming we saw something very aggressive coming or some sort of tell, um... You know, we could have responded with immortals here, more stalkers, lots of different things. But we just as well could have warped in four DTs, made some Archons, and two Archons would have, plus these gateway units, we could probably go out and just fight this, right? Um, yeah. So our opponent's build, I mean, it's one of the rare builds they'll have an Overseer this fast, happens to be quite good against DTs, but even if we had those DTs counter-attacking right now, we could just be like, well, 40 T's are in your natural and main, and we just like let them massacre our opponent's economy. And he either pulls everything home, or he very, very slowly starts breaking this wall while we just start doing some other stuff. So let's look at this specific situation now in of itself. Uh, what should we be building here? What are, what are we missing in this scenario? Archons? Yeah, Archons wouldn't be bad, but uh, Immortals are the most important, right? Oh, because yeah. Archons can't really get in and out of your wall. They're gonna struggle a little bit. And so, what's going on with the micro? Do you, can you tell what you did there? 
Um, I probably tried to select something and those zealots are having a horrible time of it. So what, what do you think you, you mean you tried to select something? Or rather, attack something. Yeah. You click, you, you targeted this one Ravager. So most of your units did zero damage in this fight. I actually thought you'd, you'd overwhelm them there and win the game, and I think you would have. But I think we were just a little bit afraid. And then you've clicked on the Overseer at this point as well. So remember, always attack move, always click in a spare patch of ground rather than anywhere near their army in case you're going to misclick. And uh, don't let that panic take over. Don't let that panic take over. Um, so this is kind of natural as well. I was expecting us to have a lot of troubles because we're learning a very different build. Whereas previously we'd done all the same build, all three matchups, and you'd built in some muscle right? So what were yeah. some responses? Um, okay, make more stalkers, maybe even add some sentries. Get that colossi out, right? It was always, always the same units, the same set. In this scenario, yeah. you're having to train yourself to do new things. Well, it's not colossi, it should be immortals we're chrono boosting. Are uh, we making zealots, adepts, or stalkers here? Which one should we be doing? I reckon in the game, in the heat of the moment, you were like, oh, I don't know what the fuck to do. I don't know which exactly. one to build. And, and that's totally natural. I would say in this scenario, always just build like adepts and stalkers, just because the zealots are slow and they aren't really going to be able to close with the other units very easily. It's not bad to make zealots. As I said earlier, they're a good raw unit in a pitched battle. It's just like defending your wall, having more stalkers and adepts to actually shoot over the wall is always nice. And the yeah. funny thing here is, if we look at this in hindsight, I mean, who's, a, who's ahead economically? in this game uh, I am with 39 workers yeah 38 to 33 right now not just that your opponent's on two base and you're on two base so that's yep. that's really good for Protoss um, if you're building high attack units so if we were building immortals oh yeah if we got out like Every immortal that comes out, any archons that come out, these units are just going to be value. I don't really like making archons when I'm in a battle situation. It's a bit awkward, warping in a unit and then morphing them. But definitely be chrono boosting those immortals. That should be our priority here, right? And Absolutely. every second that goes by, we're mining more. Our opponent's building these low value units. Ravages and Lings don't gain value over time. They're a very fragile unit. They're really good because they can explode in these very scary rushes. But if we just stayed behind our wall here, got out of Immortal, kept warping in Stalkers. We've got a lot of money. We've got a lot of supply free. If we were just warping in units, we'd be fine. What was he actually damaging? A single gateway. We've got four more where that came from. So we could have stayed behind this. If we weren't ready to take the fight, you know, we absolutely could have done it. And because I saw that you've clicked on a single Ravager and you've targeted that unit, that tells us that you weren't in any way calm in this scenario. So what you want to do is whenever you feel really jolted in a game, you're just like, oh, what the fuck happened? Number one, understand what the situation was. But number two, say, okay, what should the muscle memory be in that scenario? Okay, whenever there's an attack assaulting me with this build, make stalkers, make adepts, and make immortals. Now, if they're massing zerglings and there's no ravages, do you think you should make stalkers or adepts? Adepts. And if they're only roaches and ravages? We should do stalkers and adepts. Yep. Mostly just Stalkers. If it's just Roaches and Ravages, Stalkers are the better value unit. But obviously, like, gotcha. Ling Speed, Adepts are way better. They got the bonus to light. So that can work out fantastically. And build these little little rules for yourself as well. Because if you ever... The, 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 real, the real enemy here is indecision, right? If we had just made Zealots and, and brought them all down to the right and then A-moved them, it'd probably still work here, to be honest. Um, even without charge. As long as we were decisive and we were making more zealots behind it and we were A-moving rather than move commanding, right? The real enemy throughout today's coaching session has been a lack of confidence and panic. So we need to be confident in our build order, number one. Number two, we need to refine the shit out of those build orders. We need to be tight on these openings. Number three, Absolutely. we need to be more methodical in analyzing and breaking down rushes and saying... I need to stop just doing a random response. I need to do a tailored response to that situation. So, someone hits you with a proxy barracks marine SCV rush. I guarantee you, if you just look at the details and you pour over them in a replay and you write a list like this, you're gonna realize there's very simple things. I scouted nothing in his base. Why did I still build a Nexus? Or why didn't I cancel that? Why did it take me another 30 seconds to put down two extra gateways? Why didn't I do that straight away? Why did I forget my second pylon? 
and and so and do that and you're like well because i've never done it before i don't have a set response and that's totally natural to fuck all of that up the important thing is to watch the replay and say okay remember to cancel the nexus remember to chrono the zealots or the stalkers remember to build a shale battery or two next to our nexus in our main base and remember that if we just survive we will win the game and if you can get those things down decisively 90 percent of the time that's going to hold there will be certain rushes where you don't have the game knowledge and you engage wrong and maybe you need to go deeper and you need to say well fuck i let three bunkers get up in my main base maybe i need to pull probes to stop the first two marines and three scvs building three bunkers next to my nexus in my main base maybe i need oh you know i can pull probes in and fight that there are always exceptions to the rule but if you just are very methodical and looking for those little mistakes you're making with your execution and then also memorizing your response so that it's like, it's just a set play. You're doing X cheese, I gotta do Y, Z. Remember the second pylon, chrono boost the stalker, drop the second gateway, cancel my nexus, we got this. And you start to, when you just pull that out of your bag of tricks, your set reaction, Starcraft is an entirely different game. You get this just amazing feeling of like, I knew exactly what to do here. And it's just like snapping your fingers. Once you've done it a bunch of times, it just happens. And that's one of the best feelings in the world, just slapping down a rush. Nice. So if we have to reorient all of the crazy amount of information we talked about today, finishing up, we are out of time. What can we talk about here? What are the most important things for you to focus on? Really straightforward. A couple of little things like, okay, Let's uh, start working those habits in. Like, hey, if they've expanded, we don't need to leave our probe scout on their side of the map. The other one, let's make sure our opening is always really tight. And whenever we fuck it up, you know, let's, let's notice that straight away. We should be noticing that in the replay and immediately cluing onto that. We should say, all right, what can I do to fix that up? Okay, I've got to remember at this point. Remind myself to do this little thing. Remind myself to do that little thing. Um, just keep on refining that as much as you possibly can and just get your build orders down tight. And be confident to do your build order no matter what. You're always doing that build order. We're not looking at our probe, right? We're not running a worker around and just going, oh, what's it seeing? We're glancing back and we are just putting, are we seeing that one tell, that one thing we're scared of? Nope. Cool. Keep doing my normal build, right? When your probe goes over, he's got an expansion, he's doing a normal build. Cool. Probe, come home. Hallucination or adept or observer goes in. What do we see? And you're looking usually for one specific thing or one general idea. And you're looking for an excuse to keep doing your normal thing. So we're going to err on the side of getting our face kicked in from rushes that we haven't seen before, right? If we're not sure what's yeah. going on, just follow our normal build. And if we get our face kicked in, we'll learn from that. So we want to reverse engineer responses. We don't want to try and preempt things because that leads to us cutting into our own economy over and over again until we just can't compete in the mid game with our opponents our builds are too inefficient there's no clear goal we end up sitting in our corner of the map and never moving out to do our, our pressures and the game doesn't feel fun anymore whereas we want to be exploding into these fast pressure timings we want to be okay yeah i've defended for a bit now it's my turn to take control of this map as soon as we lose that it becomes a really depressing experience so we want to get that back and uh, get those dt timing prisms down uh, in PvP, we're going to do that two base attack. We're not probing up any third nexus, okay? Uh, we're going to do that big attack. We've cut the forge out, added a shield battery in, and we're going to focus a lot more on Zealot Archon once we get to, the, to, to there. Rather than warping in lots of stalkers, we're going to focus more on Zealot Archon. Your army's going to be way more powerful, and you're going to be the one taking the fight to your opponent, as I said, with that attack. Three or four Archons, maybe more. About three Immortals, a Warp Prism, and a ton of charge lots got eight or ten gateways behind it you should be at about 45 probes and that's it you go with that take the fight to your opponent your pvp win rate will pick up very quickly perfect excellent thank you awesome man all right good luck in your practice i want to hear some news about some uh, protoss skulls and remember right now your win rate in pvp is i believe 44 percent okay nice. we're gonna watch how that evolves over this season um okay and I, I, it's not going to magically just win every game tomorrow, but stay focused on these things. Practice a game in an empty custom game. Okay, there's my PvP build order. What do you need to get used to? All those little things. Be super detail-oriented. What am I doing in PvP? Putting two workers on gas straight away. There's a lot of little things you've got to remember. Read back through these notes and be really detail-oriented. Putting that into action. 
Two workers on each cast. Make sure we get the core down straight away. Make sure we get the sentry out straight away. Make sure we build that shield battery in the main at four minutes so we stop dying to random oracles. And, and then all that other stuff we talked about, okay? So get on it. Get on good it. luck, have fun. And I uh, hope to hear some good stories of dead Protoss. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. No worries, man. Have a good night. You too. Ah, uh, GG's. Okay, fascinating session there. Soxes, welcome to the pigsty. Thank you very much for your Twitch Prime sub. Um, there's so much psychology in StarCraft, isn't there, in terms of how we get inside our own head and we stop following our own rules. That's why rules are so important in StarCraft, right? That's why it's so important for you to be able to... Uh, this, is why, this is why people like build orders, right? And, and people often don't understand that idea. They're like, well, I prefer reacting to things. And it's like, well, a build is what allows you to react to things even better, right? That's, that's what a build is. So the build is, you know, it gives you a game plan to branch off of, right? It gives you a consistent position so that you can refine your uh, your your predefined response, right? Define and refine is the, the saying I keep saying lately. So first of all, know what you're meant to do and then take the time to put it into execution. Because even once you know what to do, it takes practice to actually do it. I think there's a lot of people who, they, <laughs> they kind of know what they've got to do. Um, and then they, they're like, okay, I know what I got to do. And they, they try to do it and they fuck it up the first time, which is totally natural, right? It's a fast paced game. There's a lot of stuff going, you're going to fuck it up. And then they're like, well, I guess that didn't work. I guess there's no way to stop the thing. And it's like, well, no, you just, that was your first time trying it. You just fucked up the execution. If you took the time to watch the replay, you'd see you got supply block three times because it's a new reaction. You haven't practiced before kind of threw you out of your rhythm. Give it a bit more practice and you'll get fucking good at it. You'll get really good at it. So a lot of players just don't take that time to, to really do that. And, and that's it, right? You kind of like, honestly, um, uh, you, you're basically just constantly honing your own ability to be self-critical and to just look for little things you can improve on, but also to be patient with yourself. Because StarCraft is such a, a difficult game to execute some of these things that uh, you've got to be patient. You know, you don't just magically instantly like, oh, I got to do the thing. And then you just like, press the button and you win the game it's like no no, no you gotta <laughs> you gotta work that into everything else you're doing <laughs> starcraft's a hard game um uh, but god damn it is satisfying it is fun so um oh i suck at chess 153 cs i absolutely suck at chess uh yeah i i, I played like maybe five or ten 10 minute matches or five minute 